In this video, we're going to look at two examples looking at the idea of the motion of center of mass. And more specifically, looking at the idea that if there's no net external force acting on a system, that the center of mass, if it's at rest, will stay at rest, or if it's moving, it will keep moving at a constant velocity. And so this first example is the idea where the center of mass is at rest, and it's staying at rest. So we have a boat of length 3 meters and mass 300 kilograms that's initially at rest. The back of the boat is 100 meters away from the riverbank. The boater has a mass of 60 kilograms and he's sitting at the rear end of the boat 100 meters away from the shore. And he gets up and he walks to the front end of the boat and sits down. How far away from the riverbank is the boat when the boater sits down in the front end? And so as this man starts to move forward, to push himself forward, his feet push to the left on the boat. And so the boat is going to move to the left, he's going to move to the right, but there's no external force acting. There's no net external force acting. So the center of mass of the person and boat together is going to stay stationary. And so we need to calculate where that center of mass is. We're going to let x equals 0 be the left end of the boat, where it starts initially, 100 meters from the shore. The man is at that position x equals 0. The boat, we're going to make the assumption that the boat is uniform, and so that its center of mass is right at the center of the boat. So the boat has a mass of 300 kilograms. We're going to treat it as if all of its mass is concentrated right at its center, which is 1.5 meters to the right of the back of the boat. And so as we go to calculate the center of mass, we're able to treat this as two point masses. The man at a position of x equals zero, and the boat, the 300 kilograms, at a position of x equals 1.5 meters. And so the x coordinate of the center of mass initially is 60 kilograms times zero plus 300 kilograms times 1.5 divided by the total mass of 360 kilograms which is at 1.25 meters. The center of mass of the system is over in between the man and the center of the boat at x equals 1.25 meters from the back of the boat or 0.25 meters to the left of the center of the boat. And so here at this point that's marked, this is the position of the center of mass of the man-boat system that center of mass is going to stay stationary. As the man moves forward and the boat moves backwards, the center of mass is going to stay in that exact same position. So because there are no net external forces acting, the center of mass must stay in the same location. So now that the man is in the front of the boat, the center of the boat shifted to the left, the man moved to the right, but the center of mass is still at x equals 1.25 meters. And again, the assumption, even though my drawing doesn't quite show this, we're making the assumption that the boat is uniform, that's symmetric on both sides. And so if it's symmetric, then this center of mass of the system still needs to be 0.25 meters away from the center of the boat. It needs to be 0.25 meters from the center of the boat in between the man and the center of the boat. So again, from symmetry, the center of the boat must still be 0.25 meters from the center of mass of the system, but on the opposite side. It, the center of mass still has to be in between the center of the boat and the person. And so looking at this, the center of the boat was 0.25 meters to the right of the center of mass of the system, and now it moved to be 0.25 meters to the left of the center of mass of the system. That means that overall, the boat shifted 0.5 meters to the left. Again, looking at this, the center of the boat went from its starting position. It moved 0.5 meters. It went 0.25 and then an additional 0.25 to get to this final spot. And so the whole boat shifted 0.5 meters to the left. And so the back end of the boat is now 99.5 meters from the shore, or 0.5 meters to the left of where it started. Again, in 
problems like these, the main idea is that if the net external force is zero, the center of mass of the system is not going to move if it was initially stationary. Again, this is the idea of Newton's first law. An object at rest will stay at rest, or an object in motion will stay in motion at a constant velocity. The same idea is true when we look at systems, but now we're talking about the motion of the center of mass of the system. If the center of mass is at rest, it will stay at rest. If the center of mass is moving, it will continue moving at a constant velocity. That's what we will see in our next example. In this second example, we have a go-kart with a mass of 300 kilograms that's moving to the right at 80 meters per second. And then we have a four-wheeler with a mass of 200 kilograms that's moving to the right at 60 meters per second. And we want to figure out how fast is the center of mass moving. So this is something where these objects are moving, there's no external force, and so the velocity of the center of mass is going to stay constant. Even though these objects are going to be getting farther apart, this one that's out front is moving faster, so it's going to be getting farther and farther away, the velocity of this center of mass is going to stay constant. And the way that we look at this is we look at the idea of momentum. If there are no external forces acting, then the momentum of the system must stay constant. The momentum of the system, that's the individual momentum, Again, momentum is mass times velocity, so it's the individual momentum of each object added together, but the momentum of the system also has to be the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass. So the total momentum of the system is the momentum of the four-wheeler, 200 kilograms times positive 60 meters per second, again we're making right the positive x direction, momentum is mass times velocity, so you have to include in what direction the velocity is in. So it's 200 kilograms times positive 60 meters per second plus the momentum of the go-kart, 300 kilograms times positive 80 meters per second. And so the total momentum of the system is 36,000 kilogram meters per second. But the total momentum of the system is also the total mass of the system times the velocity of the center of mass. And so the total mass of this system is the 200 kilograms plus 300 kilograms, or 500 kilograms, times the velocity of the center of mass. And so if the total momentum of the system is the two individual momenta added together, and the total momentum of the system is m total times the velocity of the center of mass, I can set those two equal to each other. 36,000 kilogram meters per second equals 500 kilograms times the velocity of the center of mass, so the velocity of the center of mass must be 72 meters per second. So again, the idea behind this is that there's no external forces acting, so the velocity of the center of mass of the system is staying constant, but more specifically, it's also relating that center of mass motion to the momentum of the system. We know how to find momentum of individual objects, mass times velocity, and so the momentum of the system is the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass. Sometimes it's easier to look at the momenta individually, sometimes it's easier to look at as a system. Usually we look at them individually, but there is this relationship between the individual momentum vectors and the velocity or motion of the center of mass.